And the third key issue is precisely that, not just from a personal point of view, but from a pro professional point of view. What should you be doing about smart machines? So let me begin uh, with the first key issue, and let's dive into a model. Uh, we have a eight-axis model here that tries to characterize many different families of smart machines. I urge you to ignore the blue line. That's just an illustration of how we might rank a or evaluate rather a family of smart machines. Uh, I want to use this diagram to help you understand what we're talking about. What are the key characteristics of smart machines? And the first thing right at the top is they observe. They learn by observing. They also learn from experience and feedback. They learn through formal training. They test the real world. So when we look at the IBM Watson uh, clinical advisor, uh, you'll see an example of that technology advising the doctor that it could do a better job in coming up with a suggested treatment plan if the doctor would collect some more data. So they test the reality of the world. They behave autonomously. And I'll give you several examples of autonomous behavior. Uh, they, they make decisions not based on finite certitude, but they'll be making the, the Google car you'll be riding in uh, in seven years. will make probabilistic decisions as to whether the vehicle coming down the road towards you is going to hit you or not, and whether it needs to take evasive action or not. And there's no finite definitive answer to that. It's a probabilistic one. If these technologies will predict the future and act autonomously on them, they will be narrow in purpose. And by that I mean that the, the brains behind the autonomous automobile will not fly your autonomous airplane. It'll be a different type of smart machine flying that airplane. Uh, they, and I'll try to demonstrate to you how they understand, or they appear to understand. Uh, they abstract, abstract concepts from bodies of material. And finally, they elicit a human reaction. And the human reaction is everything from surprise and awe, and oh my god, I didn't know a machine could do that, to oh my god, I'm not going to trust that thing. <laughs> So there's eight different dimensions on which we're going to measure smart machines, and this is research that's underway, but those are the key characteristics to think about as we try to describe smart machines. Let's dive into a little bit of this. Uh, this is not, now first, if you don't recognize this, this is a drone, United States Air Force drone. Okay? This is not a political question on the bottom of the slide. 